There are a lot of 3D shapes now that you can create an autograph based on a plane and all of them owe their lives to just two points on the plane and you build up from there. Uh, don't forget control, drag takes a closer look and shift, drag moves things around. So let's see how this works on, on a different plane. So right click, enter equation. Let's put an equation of a plane in. It doesn't really matter what it is for now. Let's do 2x minus 3y equals 6. And let's uh, give it a different color, make it a bit easier. So if we put two points on there, one followed by another one, then you've got some choices now. Is the um, tetrahedron, for example, if we're going to do that, going to go over here and then up or down. So you've got lots of choices. So right click, create, off the bottom, object, create. Now, tetrahedron, let's go for that. Now see the choices here, it's positive or negative, it's not too, too clear which direction that's going to be. So if you get it wrong, you just double click and come back to this again. So positive and then counterclockwise. Okay, so it's gone that way around, so we just need to double click on it and change it to negative and then it'll come the other way. Now if you get the calculator out, and point at this, you see it's a tetrahedron, all these bits of information are known, these are attributes of that tetrahedron, side length, height, surface area and so on. So if we put surface area for example, and the text before could be S A equals, surface area equals 5.231, click OK, and there it is. And you do the same for all the other ones. Uh, you can of course also create a polygon on a plane, so let's do one, two, three, four, pretty random shape, it doesn't really matter terribly, so right click, create a polygon, then once you've got a polygon you can create a prism of height whatever, you can call it height A if you like, and then that's gone the other way, so double click, negative, And you can use the constant control, of course, to make it taller. You can also attach prisms and other objects to a surface. Any surface in a 3D shape can be the basis of a pyramid or a prism. So you can take a prism on there of height 2. And again, if it goes the wrong way, make it negative. So lots of possibilities. Let's look at some shapes now that can be generated in 3D based on curves. So I'll put this one in, it's y equals x into 3 minus x, so we'll have a look here. Where we... y equals x into 3 minus x. Now if you plot that, you get something that looks a bit strange, but of course there's no z anywhere here. So for all z, this is happening. So double click and you want to plot as a 2D. But while we're here let's just do the draw options and make it a bit fatter. There we are. Okay, I'm going to put two points on there. Let's put one here and one here. And obviously in previous versions of Autograph it's well known that you can create volumes, an, an area under here and a volume about this axis or about the other one. But for now we'll show you something that's new which is the arc length from here to here. So right click, create arc length. Okay and that is something you can select and about this axis you can rotate to produce a surface. So right click, create surface revolution and with slow plot on it'll do it nice and slowly. Now you can do actually about any axis that's in the xy plane. So if we draw z equals 0, then put any two points on there, and then right click, 
line, create a straight line through there. We can then hide this plane because it's done its job. Then you can select that line and this arc length to produce a surface just off the edge there. We get the idea. That's grayed out because we've got our own line here and click OK and uh, it's going to go around like that. And this can be moved around of course because it's completely dynamic. Don't forget if you hold down control you can drag and take a closer look at all of this and also the calculator is available bearing in mind that all these objects have got lots of attributes surface area centroid and so on so let's do a surface area of that that'll go in there and s a equals uh, it comes up in the middle there, so you might have to sort of search for it a bit, but there it is. Uh, labels in th three dimensions are quite tricky, but uh, isn't it wonderful you can just sort of zoom around and look at it underneath. We're going to have a look now at an application of vectors to find the closest distance between two straight lines in three dimensions. So in order to do that, I'll just come over to this side and put four points on. One, two, three, and four. Then select that one and that one, but I've got that already selected. So don't forget to deselect first that one and that one, and right click, line, straight line. Deselect that one and that one, and right click, line, straight line. Good. Uh, they're a bit close to each other, so I'm going to move it over like that. That's better. Now there is an operation in Autograph to select this line and then this line and right click. It's a point operation because you're creating two points on one on each line, uh, which gives you the shortest distance. Now what I want to do is show that a vector along this line and the vector on this line are both mutually perpendicular to this direction here. And that's best done with the cross product. At this point, I like to press Control and drag, take a closer look so I can see what I'm doing. That's better. So go to point mode, and I want to put another point on this line, just a bit further up the line from there, and another one on this one. Now I'm going to select this one, followed by this one, and make a vector of that. So right click, vector, two points. This one, and this one, and right click, a vector, two points. Move it down a bit further if you want. Okay, so now if I select this one and this one and put the answer here, right click, vector, cross product. And there you can see it is a vector in exactly the same direction, which is a mutually perpendicular direction to both lines. Now a quick look at how Autograph handles uh, two planes and line of intersection and some vector work. So let's come over here where we've got nothing on. So I'm just going to double click on this plane and show that what it is actually is a point and a linear combination of two vectors. That's one way of defining a plane. Another way of defining a plane of course is to give it uh, an equation and here it is. So if we deselect, select one plane and select the other right click you should have the option to look at the line of intersection so what is that if we click on that you get the information down here which you can double click on and make it a bit more readable at the top so you've got the equation of this line is um, a point and and a lambda times another vector and the angle between the two planes is in radians change it to degrees if you prefer So now we've got the line of intersection, I want to put a point on that line and it's quite tricky to get it on because there are a lot of things competing for it but if you move the arrow keys around you can see that it is generally on that line. Now uh, I want to find a vector that is perpendicular to this plane so if I select this point and this plane right click vector normal unit vector and if I select this point and this plane and right click 
to a normal unit vector. Fantastic. So now if I do a cross product, this cross this and the answer here will produce a vector in this direction. So if I do this one and this one and this point, not this line, if you select something you don't mean, just click it again and it undoes it. Right click, vector, cross product. And that's a really nice way of showing that the line of intersection is mutually perpendicular to the two normal vectors. We'll just finish off with a few ideas that uh, use the Argand diagram page in Autograph. Um, this is quite well documented in the version 4 video, but I'll just repeat a few things here that have changed. Let's put uh, a couple of complex numbers on and select them both and we can add, subtract, multiply, divide, but whatever you do to it the new one has the label of Z1 plus Z2 so it actually explains what you've just done. So if we do that one, multiply by I, get it over there. So select that lot and delete. If you put a point at say plus 4 and then ask for the nth root, let's ask for the square root of that, you'll have two answers, 2 and minus 2 and they're now called omega 1 and omega 2. If you double click on that you can make it the cube root of 4 and you can move it around like that and if you add the three roots omega 1, 2 and 3 together you will get 0 of course. You can get omega on the revised keyboard, so view keyboard here it is, uh, not the data side but the text side and the extra bit. There is omega down the bottom there. Now what about all this? Let's just uh, select this lot here and press delete. So what you can do is draw a circle at the origin, uh, let's say radius 2, and you can put a complex number attached to it. Now that will have the freedom to move around that circle. So if you now uh, suggest a transformation for that complex number and what you've got here is a series of presets which are all quite useful but if let's go to the simple one like sign or you can type it in here and hope for the best so let's go for the preset that will create a new complex number that is related to the first one by the formula that you've just entered however this is constrained to move around here this is a result of that, therefore it's set up to be a locus. So select those two and right click, locus, and there it goes. And then you can walk this around and show where it actually fits. There we are, that's the complex numbers bit. And on this same session we've had, uh, we've had planes to look at. Um, we've had shortest distance to look at and we've had surfaces to look at and we've had a host of new shapes to look at. So I hope you found that useful and look out for the next video when it comes. Mm -hmm.